Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Commonplace Church. Thank you so much for being here. There's a, there's a big group over here, but over here it's kind of... Anyway, uh, it's interesting how you all kind of figured it out. So welcome. If you're just visiting, we're Commonplace Church, and you caught us on an amazing day. This is Family Dedication or Baby Dedication Day. Um, I'm, we're not doing announcements. Announcements is... It, it's exciting. Announcements is Baby Dedication. And so for those of you who are unfamiliar, this family dedication, um, baby dedication in church is not something that the Bible necessarily calls out as something that's a commandment, right? There's really nowhere in Scripture in the Bible you can go to say, okay, this is a clear, you know, prescribed thing from God. But it is something that, you know, from time to time, especially if you come from like a Catholic background, there's... there's um, infant baptism. And so at times people will come in, into a, an evangelical church like this and say, w what is there for me as my family is kind of growing? And so, so one of the things that, that churches like ours have come up with is, is family dedication or baby dedication. If you go into the Bible, um, and really it's just a commitment um, to raising, the, the, the family is committing to raising their, their children in the gospel, right? To, to know Jesus to, to love God, to serve people, right? And so if you go into the Bible, there's a few examples of kind of dedication. In 1 Samuel, um, Hannah, we read that Hannah um, is, not, is unable to have children, and she prays to God that, that she would be able, that he would grant her the gift of life and to be able to, to conceive of a child, and she does. And she dedicates Samuel, we're told. Um, she, she brings him up, and then once he's of age, she actually brings him into the temple and gives him to God, dedicates his life to God's, to God's service. And so from that moment on, the second the handoff happens, Samuel goes into the temple and he's basically like the mentee of the, the temple, the intern of the temple as a child, and he grows up to become a great prophet. In fact, in 1 Samuel 3, 19 to 21, it says this, and Samuel grew and the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground, which is kind of cool. Imagine if you if if you you had a you had a child and and all of a sudden you, you 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 God made it such that not one word from that from that boy or girl hit the ground meaning it was not void it was all of it was important that's what happened with Samuel Samuel when when God spoke through Samuel his words didn't hit the ground everything he spoke um, was powerful. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was established as a prophet of the Lord, right? And then the second time that we see kind of family dedication or a baby dedication is with Jesus himself. And so, so Mary and Joseph bring, bring Jesus at day, day eight, right, or whatever it was, and, and for the normal everyday rituals. They bring their two turtle doves, they bring their two pigeons, and they, they want to um, have him circumcised, and they want to have, go through the normal ritual that young Jewish men would go through. But what was a little bit different about this one is that Simeon was there. And Simeon had, had where the Bible tells us that Simeon had been there for a long period of time, and, and he was told, it was revealed to him, that he would see the Messiah. And so it's a little bit different because all Jewish boys would have gone through what Jesus went through, but not all Jewish boys had an elderly Simeon grab them and hold them up and bless them in the way that Simeon did, to the extent that Mary and Joseph both kind of walked away from that experience saying, that was interesting. Why did that old guy hold up our baby and bless him in the way that he blessed him? Huh. And the Bible says that they went away marveling at, at what that, that man said. Um, and, and so... That is why, those are just a couple examples of, of dedication to the Bible. But again, it's not necessarily you could go to a certain passage and say, okay, this is where, where it is, right? And so, so we're, we're here each Sunday, every Sunday, um, and one of the reasons why we're here doing family dedication is because of the gospel. The gospel is the good news that, that God sent Jesus, who I was just talking about, sent Jesus to be a rescuer. He did that before the foundations of the earth, when he knew that mankind would fall, and, he, and, and from the, before the foundations were even set on the earth, the Godhead knew that it would rescue sinners through Jesus Christ. And so what, what happens is the God of the universe sends the Son, Jesus, to step into the world, right, born of a virgin. He lives a life 
a perfect life, the life that you and I should live but can't because of sin. And then what he does is he goes to the cross, and on the cross, he takes our sin, the world's sin, on himself, and he pays for the world's sin on the cross. And the reason why we know that Jesus Christ, the perfect one, can actually um, do what he says he can do, which is rescue mankind from sin and cleanse them from all unrighteousness, cleanse them from evil. The reason why we know he can do that and, forget, and grant us forgiveness is because of what happens after he dies. After he dies, Jesus comes back. Jesus comes back to life, right? This may be very familiar because we sell all, most of us celebrate Christmas, most of us celebrate Easter. Jesus comes back to life. And the resurrection of Jesus shows that what he said he could do, which is live the perfect life, die a, the penalty for, for sin, and exchange his perfect life, get, grant believers his perfect life, and take on their sin, is true. The resurrection proves that he can forgive sin. And it doesn't just stop there. He doesn't just come back to life and walk around. Yeah, he walks around for 40 days. 500 people see him here. A few hundred people see him there. And then eventually he ascends into heaven. Right? And that is part of the gospel as well. Because what we believe is that Jesus didn't stay dead. He came to life. He came back to life. He didn't just come back to life. But he ascended into heaven where he sits forever until he returns. Right? And so that is the gospel. And what the gospel does is it informs everything we do. Drilling into parents, right? The gospel motivates parents to just that, that, what the gospel is, is that moment in time. Jesus coming, rescuing, right? Right? His life, his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension. That's the gospel. That's what we believe changes lives. And when you believe that, you become a child of God. And so the gospel motivates parents, people, parents who believe the gospel, right? Who are believers, who are born again, who are Christians, they, we believe that the gospel motivates parents to do a number of things. One, it motivates them to fear God and to teach the fear of God to their children. Not, I am afraid of God, but God is bigger than me. God, God is perfect and he's holy and he's different and he's other and he's not the same as my best friend. He's not the same thing as my parents. He's not the same, it's not the same relationship that, that I have anywhere on earth, right? It is different. He is other and I'm going to treat him as that. Because I'm not God, he is. It motivates parents to lead by example. So not only, are they, they, not only are they seeking to raise their kids responsibly, but they are demonstrating the gospel, the good news that there is forgiveness in the way that they live their lives. Right? What does that look like? That looks like husbands apologizing to their wives and seeking their forgiveness when they've wronged them and the kids seeing that. It also looks like it also looks like a father or a mother asking their child for forgiveness when they've reacted in, in a harsh way or in a way that, that was unbecoming, right? Um, which can be challenging. It also, the gospel motivates parents to center their family around serving, serving out of love and thankfulness, not serving out of, um, of a list of rules. Well, the Bible says that we have to serve, but what the gospel does is it frees mothers and fathers to create a, a central focus in their home that is about serving others. And why do they do it? They do it because Jesus showed them what love is. They do it because they are thankful for, for what Jesus did on the cross for them. And so they go out of their way, and, and, and sometimes I wake up in the morning on a Sunday, and I say, we're going to church, and my kids say, really? Do we have to? And I say, yes, we have to. Why? Because the goal of, of, of parenting is to not only display the gospel, but center their fa your family around the, the, the core tenets of the gospel, love and thankfulness. The gospel motivates parents to discipline their children, not harshly, but understanding that if, if you're a Christian, you have a good father in heaven who disciplines you. In fact, the Bible says that there's no child of God who isn't getting disciplined. Right? There's no child of God who, who isn't, who isn't get, getting disciplined. And in fact, it says that if you're not being disciplined, you might not be a child of God. Right? And so a, a Christian parent understands that the God of the universe disciplines me. Why? To, because he's harsh? Because he's got a lightning bolt? He wants to strike me down? No, because he loves me and he, he doesn't want me to stay the way I am. He wants me to, be, to become increasingly, increasingly more like his perfect son. Right? And so the, a, a 
Christian parent understands and is motivated by the gospel to discipline their children, not harshly, but so that they can grow up, right? Uh, it motivates uh, parents to teach their children, teach their children the gospel. It motivates children, this is a good one, to lavish their children with love and affection because that's what, the God, that's what God does through the gospel. Through Jesus Christ, he lavishes his love, his grace, his mercy on us. And as, as Christian parents, the, the gospel motivate, motivates us to do the same. It motivates us to see, I'm talking about, I'm a, I'm a Christian parent, so it motivates Christian parents to see their failures and inadequacies in a different way. Which is, which is interesting, right? Because a lot of times um, you, can go to, you can go to sleep as a parent and say, I really messed up today, right? My kids aren't listening. This, isn't, this wasn't working. The best laid plans I had for today on a Saturday afternoon or a Sunday afternoon didn't work out. And, and you can c- come away feeling like a failure. And what's interesting is the gospel comes and it informs that. How many mothers have said, I'm just inadequate to the task? How many fathers have said, I just really messed up today? And what the gospel does is it comes alongside the Christian parent and says it's okay. Because the gospel says that failure isn't final with God. And so the gospel says, dust yourself off and start again. Right? Because his mercies are are new every morning. So, uh, quickly, I just wanted to touch on two, two, two passages. Hold on one sec. Hold on. There we go. So, in uh, Deuteronomy uh, 11, 11 verse, verses, uh, verse 18, it says, You shall therefore lay up these words of mine in your heart. This is going to the Old Testament. Um, Moses had just, has just got, gotten finished talking about love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and has given them a lot of instructions and commandments. And he says, you shall therefore lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul, and you shall bind them as a sign on your hand. And they shall be frontlets between your eyes, and you shall teach them to your children, talking to them when you are sitting in your house, and when you are on the, walking by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates, that your days and the days of your children may be multiplied in the land that the Lord swore to you through his fathers to give them. Right? And so here, here what we see is, is that the God of the universe is saying that... <laughs> the God of the universe is saying it's hard to, like, juggle phone, like microphone and, but here we go. The God of the universe is saying, is saying that my commandments are so important, right, that I want you to not only imbibe them and ingest them and live them out, but I want you to, he, he makes it a point to say, I want you to display them to your children. I want everywhere in your home, on the doorposts, I want you to wear them. I want everywhere in your house to be to be my commandments. Everywhere they look, I want, you, I want them to see it. And when you're walking with your kids on the way to school, and when, you're, when your kids first wake up, and when their heads hit the pillow, I want you to encourage them with my commandments so that they know them, right? And that's the Old Testament. And what happens is, in the New Testament, we, the, the gospel kind of takes that place, right? And so, parents and this is kind of how my, how my wife and I have kind of, uh, kind of lived at various times, albeit inadequate at times and, and failing at times, is that when you, and, and this is what, what, I'll, what I'll encourage the parents to today, is, is that when, you, when you're living life in the mundane, everyday moments of life, how are you articulating the gospel? How are you displaying the gospel, Right? How, how, how is it seen? How is it heard? And, and, and in my mind, it gets to the point where eventually your, your, your kids are like, Mom, Dad, we get it. Like, we get it. Like, you're, you're standing on your head in the goal as we're, we're playing, playing around at the park. And, and you're standing on your head trying to, like, protect the goal as I'm trying to kick it in. And you're, you're, you're saying Bible verses to me? What are you, what are you nuts? What are you, crazy? Like, and, and, and what's interesting is... is Paul, in 2 Corinthians, it says, and I love this passage for parents, it's, it's 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, starting at verse 13. It says, for if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. Like, if we're out of our minds, it's for God. If we are in our right minds, it's for you. 
For the love of Christ controls us. And this is, I love this passage because you could think of, you can read this as if you're a parent. For the love of Christ controls us because we have concluded that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, that those who, who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Mom, Dad, why are you so crazy about this gospel thing? Why are you so nuts about this gospel thing? Well, it's because we are convinced. It's, it's because we are convinced that Jesus died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them. It's because we're, Mom and I are convinced Dad and I are convinced that, that Jesus rescued us, and because he rescued us, it's no longer about us. It's about you, and it's about other people, right? And then he goes on to say, he goes on to say, from now on, therefore, we, we, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh. We're, now gonna, we're not going to regard people as just flesh and bone. We're going to regard people as spiritual people because that is what they are, Right? We regard them that way no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses or sins against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Why are we so excited about this thing? Because not only has God reconciled us to himself through his son, but he's giving us the message of reconciliation. Meaning you can pass on to your children that they can be reconciled with the God of the universe. And not only that, but you can pass on to your children and throughout your family this, the, this, this message of reconciliation. Because what happens with sin? Sin doesn't just damage our relationship with the God of the universe. It damages our relationship with each other. And so with this message of reconciliation, it changes everything. Because now you're going out of your way to be reconciled with your kids when there's an issue. You're going out of your way to be reconciled with your spouse when there's an issue. And you're going and you're displaying what it means to reconcile relationships all around you. Why? Not because you want to. There's some relationships that I don't want back. (laughs) But... Because the gospel informs our lives and says the God of the universe reconciles relationships and so should you. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us, right? Parents, we are ambassadors for Christ and God makes his appeal through us. The means by which our children learn about Jesus, understand the gospel, and believe is through our efforts, through our teaching, through our display. God is making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So I love that passage because you can read that as a parent and say, this is my mission. The, 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 God controls my life as a parent. And all of a sudden, it doesn't just become about how do I raise how do I raise responsible, hardworking, fun adults. It becomes, yes, I want to raise hardworking, fun, responsible adults, but I also want to raise people who are ready for eternity. And that's what Christian parenting really is about. I don't necessarily care what you do for a living, although it's kind of important, but I care about that you know where you're going in eternity, right? And so what we're going to do right now is we're going to call up these parents, um, and families, if they want to come up, I guess. Um, so we're going to call up, um, well, maybe we'll call up Austin and, and Morgan Collignon, and Micah, Micah Austin Collignon. We'll call up um, Corey and Talia Costa with Indy Solana Costa. We're going to call up Steve and, and uh, Danielle Iber, uh, along with Savannah and, and Chase. And we'll call up um, Keith and, and Jen Runney um, with Cash, Harper, and Claire. This is a good group. I love this. 
<laughs> During one of the announcements when we were talking about doing this, um, I mentioned that there was a time when in our own life with our kids that we just kind of forgot, you know? And then we had a baby on the way and we're like, oh, well, we might as well get the seven-year-old and the 10-year-old and the 18-year-old into the mix, right? So, so I love that this is not just a baby dedication, it is a family dedication, all right? Um, so we have little ones, we have big ones, I love it. So um, each of these parents is committing to be faithful to the covenant of family dedication, which is really just saying before you and, and before God that they wanna raise their kids up to, to love Jesus, right? And we're gonna ask them each to affirm their commitment to, to this covenant or to this commitment. Um, and part of it is not just them determining that this is how we want to raise our kids, but they're also displaying this to us, a lot of their church family, so that we can do the same. So whether that's in um, kids' men or whether that's in youth group at some point or middle school or whatever it is, um, that in, in every encounter that we have with these children as they grow up, right, that we're able to, again, be a great example for what the gospel is, right, and what the gospel means. Um, so we're going to do a little call and response here. Um, so parents, if you would um, respond with either I will or we, we will, right? Um, and so first, first question, will you do your best to raise this child or children to honor, revere, and love Jesus Christ? Awesome. Will you do your best to maintain a home where Jesus Christ is honored and obeyed, where the word of God is the authority and Jesus Christ is the head? Awesome. Um, will you commit this child or these children to God in prayer on a regular basis, trusting God to override your mistakes, like we talked about before, and make up for your shortcomings? Good, because you're going to need that. Um, four, will you actively rely on the Holy Spirit to raise this child and to incline his or her heart to the Lord? Okay. Um, will you do your best to release this child to the will of God, whatever that might be, without bitterness or resistance. That's a tough one. We will, good. Um, and then uh, finally, will you do your best to be fully devoted followers of Jesus so that this child has godly examples to follow? Great, great. So um, we have a bag for each of them. Um, it's just like a little token here. Um, if you want to pass it for something. Oh, oh. Corey's going to hand them out. <laughs> I forgot the label number. Uh. <laughs> cool. So, um, so this, this is it, right? Now we're going to pray, and, um, and we're going to pray a blessing on these families and on these children, and, and then we're going to uh, move on to, to the sermon. So let's, let's, let's pr pray with me if you would. Heavenly Father, thank you that you love us. Thank you that you rescue sinners through your son. Thank you that um, you love parents and, and, and you love children. Uh, I'm reminded of Jesus saying, let the children, little children come to me. Don't, don't stop them from coming to me. They're important. Um, and, 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 and that has had a, a, a large, a huge effect on how the world um, views children in, in the world. Um, Christianity and, and the way that Jesus responds to children um, has, has impacted our culture um, in, in amazing ways and continues to do so. And um, we're just so, so thankful for these parents, um, and we're thankful for these babies and for these children, and, and we just pray your blessing on them today. We pray that you would um, encourage these parents, strengthen them, um, with, with sometimes with babies and with toddlers it seems hard, and then with, with children and with teenagers, it, it, it seems like a different type of heart. And so we pray that you would encourage them, um, that you would, you would bless them, that they would go out of their way to, to display the gospel to their children, um, be it memorizing scripture or, or even just um, having to sit them down to ask for forgiveness and displaying what that looks like. We pray that, th that, that these fathers and these mothers would encourage each other along the way um, it's, it's not easy going it alone, and we, and, and we just pray that these, uh, kind of like, like what Simeon prayed over, over Jesus himself, we just pray that, that each of these children would be used of you, um, that, that we know that you have a purpose, that you have a plan for their lives, um, and we pray that they would live up to that purpose, and that they would see, and, and above all, that they would come to know you 
and, and your son as their rescuer, um, as their savior, and that they would trust you, and that, and that with their eternity secure, they would, would live lives that, that bring you glory. Um, we pray for this church congregation and the, and the families that are represented here, the grandparents and the aunts and the uncles. We pray that we, we as, as the audience kind of watching this happen, that we would dedicate ourselves to doing all that we can do um, to, to um, help these families and to, and to uh, display the gospel to these children. Um, and, and that we would take that seriously, right? That, that whether we're um, in the back uh, in Sunday school or kidsmen or, 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 or whatever it is, that, that we would be able to have these godly gospel encounters um, with these kids and with these families and that we would strive to come along these, alongside these families and, and, and to bolster them and to encourage them along the way. We thank you so much again for your son. It's in his name we pray, amen.